I like to start on the back is because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to hold your body up. So we're gonna lie flat on our backs so that we can center ourselves and prepare ourselves for the day. So this is a different type of Shavasana that's done at the end versus at the beginning of class. Beginning is to center, exactly. So just to let go of the breath, maybe even let out a few deep sighs as if a sigh of relief that you made it here. I'm in this space on your mat today. Giving yourself that permission to feel the breath now in the navel center. Fully and completely. So that you're feeling the breath coming into the body and you're feeling the breath going out of the body. You're not clinging to the thoughts or the emotion that come into play, but rather just experience. Where are you at in this moment? Where are you at with your breath? Does it seem shallow and incomplete? Or does it feel full and complete? We're going to inhale to the count of six. And exhale to the count of six. One to one ratio of breathing to calm the central nervous system down. And as you inhale, pull up the whole entire rib cage. So the belly button expands into the sideways, maybe even into the lower back and middle back. And when you exhale, it's like a funnel, as if you're pulling all of the energy down through the navel center and away. You're narrowing the space on the exhalation, as if you're hugging into the body to absorb. And you're expanding to bring in light, energy, and movement on the inhalation. Inhaling to six. And exhale to six. On the next inhalation, you're going to pause at the very top to count to two. This is retaining the breath at the top of the inhalation. And then you'll let the breath come out naturally on an exhalation to the count of six. And if you're struggling with that count, don't worry. Just give yourself permission to experience it. Letting go of the fingers and the toes. If your feet are flat on the floor and your knees are bent, let your knees touch, widen your feet. Almost like a kickstand. So allow the breath to come back to its natural rhythm. And even breathing without control. And let's become aware of what's in the mind. Picture a bubble and imagine it. Picture yourself with your emotions and thoughts. worries, your joys, and your sorrows. Those could be visions and pictures of things, colors, symbols, whatever it might be that pops up behind your closed eyes. Breathe into it without clinging to the idea of it. And on the exhalation, place it into that imaginary bubble. 
one by one. Filling up that bubble with your joys, your sorrows. Giving yourself permission to release and let go. So you can center your body to the practice that lies ahead. And when you can't fill up that bubble anymore, seeing it expand with all that is. And the next exhalation, seal off the bubble and throw it out into the air. Giving yourself permission to be present in the here and the now. Bringing your palms together now at the center of your heart. Let the thumbs press into your breastbone and your sternum. And let's create an intention for your practice today. What brought you here on your mat? Is it something physical? Is it something emotional? Is it something spiritual? And on your exhalation, allow yourself to breathe deeply into your intention three times. And let's dedicate our practice to each other today, to the space that we have to practice in. Let's repeat that to ourselves three times. Honoring our practice today with loving kindness. Opening up the palms so you're creating a funnel with your palms. It's known as Padma Mudra. And just receive the bottom of the palms connect, the fingers open up. So as if you're um, receiving through the buds of the flower. Inhale, straighten the arms up towards the sky and the ceiling to receive. And then as you exhale, roll the fingers in to touch the back of the knuckles and bring the hands back to the heart center. Only take what you only need, nothing more, nothing less. Inhaling again, expanding, opening up those fingers again like the flower of the lotus. You're also giving away into the universe for others to receive. And then exhale, roll the fingers in, bringing that love and tenderness into the heart. And then one more time, inhaling expansion as the arms straighten towards the sky and the heavens. And then exhaling, absorbing in towards the heart. Then we'll gently say the words namaste, namaste, honoring each other with loving kindness today. Blinking the eyes open if they're not already open. Roll on over to your left side and come to a seated position. If ever you're feeling out of sorts today, you can do what's called boo, B-H-U, boo. <laughs> Mudra. You can take your thumb and tuck it in and hold it down with your ring finger and pinky. This is a very calming, grounding mudra. And you can touch the earth with it. You can also bring one just like to your heart center or your navel center, but this is very stabilizing. This is an earth element. It's called Bu. Uh, ring finger, pinky, held down holding down the thumb. So let's just sit here for a minute and just sense the grounding stability of our seat, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. You might feel this in certain areas of your body. I feel it in my solar plexus. So just embrace where the sensations come. We're gonna open our eyes now. You can release your hands or keep them in the mudra, it's up to you. You're gonna walk your right hand over to the right and laterally lift the left arm up 
alongside the ear, turn the palm in. Push down through the outer left hip, rotate your neck on the axis of the neck, and pin the chin in towards the underarm. If your neck hurts today, just look down at your thumb. Bend the bottom elbow for a deeper stretch. Feel the absorption of your spine lift through the rib cage so you're standing more upright with your seat versus leaning back. Very good, very young. Feel the breath here. Inhale, lift back up. We're going to rotate now to the left, twisting, taking the left right arm to the outside of the left thigh, or an open twist would be taking your hand to the right uh, shin. Open the chest up. Take your left fingers behind your sit bones and reach your chest forward. Roll the top of your shoulders back. Take your back arm, your left arm, and pin it in towards the spine. And take your right arm and reach the shoulder forward. Gaze over your back shoulder if you want to experience the past. Looking into the past to release the shadows or look forward into your future over the right shoulder. Keeping this position with your torso, we're going to laterally bend over the right knee. So I'm already in that position and I just want to bend over the knee. So if I was to look down, my nose is above my right knee and then reach the left arm back up towards the sky, turn the palm in, you can take your hand, bending at the elbow, and push your head into your hand for a deeper stretch. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're all twisted, <laughs> right? <laughs> Inhale back up to center and release, and then switch the twist of uh, the cross-legged. Whatever is in front, put it in back. It's always so awkward for me to use my opposite, even with finding my hands. I just don't find ease with that. Anyway, take your left hand now and walk it over to the left, just outside of the hip, not behind the head, not towards the knee, just straight out to the side of the hip. Laterally bending, open the chest, reach the right arm up, palm in. Reach it alongside the ear, maybe even pinning the upper arm bone in towards the right ear. Looking up by taking your chin and rotating it underneath your underarm or look down at your thumb. Variation two is to bend the left elbow for a little deeper of a stretch. Anchor down through your outer hips. Try to make your palm an extension of your spine. So instead of dropping your hand, reach up through the fingertips so the wrist is straight. So you're going to reach a little bit more through your fingers. Say, oh, yeah. Inhale back up to center. Now twisting towards the left. Just twisting towards the right. <laughs> yeah. I've got myself all twisted. <laughs> Take your right hand behind your sit bones. Lift your chest up. Look over your back shoulder and experiencing your shadows. Feel the back body here. Push down through the tailbone. Push down through the outer hip, especially the right hip. We're going to go into our lateral bend here. So keeping this twisted motion, now I'm bending over my left knee, reaching the right arm up towards the sky, or bending the right hand behind the head and pushing the head back into space. It's a much deeper twist. Yes, Lord Torre. <laughs> Inhale back up to center. Exhale, release. Now we're going to go into our cat dog. So move your props off the side. Coming on to all four. I'm going to put my hair up. Get this side. 
Place your hands under your shoulders. And your knees under your hips. If you feel the inside of the palm of the hand, so picture yourself as a cat and just kind of claw at the mat, the floor, dragging your thumb towards your pointer finger and then lifting the palm up. This is called a hasta banda movement where we're creating a seal, an energy lock under the palm of the hand. Just kind of drag the thumb towards the pointer. Then become steady. Anchor down through the flesh of the thumb and forefinger. So you're pushing down into that space right there. So on your left hand, Sally, even a little push down into this space right here. Okay. No, you don't have it. Now that I know why. Yeah. Inhale the tailbone up towards the sky. Drop the chest down with straight arms. Exhale, rounding through the tailbone first. Push through the center of the hand where the thumb and pointer finger meet and tuck your head. Pull the navel in and up. You should feel a deep stretch in the lower back here when you do that. Push down through the ankles and the tops of the feet. All the ten toenails moving down towards the earth. Mm -hmm. Inhale now again, lift the tailbone up. Drop the chest down, straight arms. Reach the throat through. The, the belly is still firm. You're not just spilling out your navel. Exhale, round the head, round the tailbone, lift up through the upper back. Inhaling. Now at your own pace. Maybe you want to inhale to six. And exhale to six. Or maybe you want to go faster to bring a little bit more stimulation. Whatever it is, you work at your own breath rhythm. After the next exhalation, we're going to come back into a neutral spine, tabletop. We're going to go into a tiger stretch, narrowing the knees, walking them a little closer together. Let me turn this way. We're going to take our left palm in a little bit more narrow. We're going to reach our right arm straight. Turn the right palm in. That's variation one. Variation two is to straighten the left leg back. And rock and roll on your toes if your leg's straight. And if you have problems with your palm, can you do this, Sally? Would this be better for you? Yeah. 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 Variation three uh, is to lift the left leg up, right arm yeah. forward. Yeah. And then reach around for your ankle. Yeah. And lift the foot up. Ooh, I put oil on today. Now I'm sleeping. Take that out. Reach the collarbones forward. Always look to the horizon. Help you balance. Exhale down. We're going to switch sides. Take the left palm forward. Palm in. Turn the whole upper arm bone in. Straighten the right leg back and rock and roll on those toes. If you're comfortable here with the foot straight back, lift the right leg up. Look forward to the horizon. Kick away with the lifted foot. Variation three, reach around, grab your ankle with all five fingers. Whoa. <laughs> lift up through the right knee and look forward to the horizon. Good, ladies. 
Exhale, release. Let's swivel our pelvis a little bit. Let's make uh, the number eight with your pelvis. Inhaling and exhaling here. And then the other way. Notice which way is more challenging. Or maybe it's just me. <laughs> Oh. Let's come on to our knees. We're going to go into gate pose, Parigasana. Have two blocks handy. <clears throat> We're going to take our right leg out to the side. So I'm using the length of my mat. I'm going to take my right leg out. Toes pointing forward, line up the head of the knee with the inner arch of your foot. Take one block to the outside of the left knee on its high height. One block in front of the right knee, high height. So one block in front of the extended leg. That block, Mary Ellen, in your hand, yes. And then take that one to the outside. Yes, very good. <clears throat> it's called Paragasana Gate Pose. We're going to inhale first, bring our hand down to the left block, next to the left knee. We'll lift the right arm up towards the sky, turn the palm in, and extend the arm over the ear. Just like we did earlier, take your hand behind your head and push your head back into space and look up towards the sky. <clears throat> Rock and roll to the outer edge of your right foot, the one that's extended. Feel the pinky side of the foot. If you're able to, variation two is to come down to the low edge of the block and lift the right leg up. Extend the right arm up towards the sky or over the head. That kick away through that heel. Exhale, release that foot. Come back up on the knee. And now we're going to laterally back over towards the right into gate pose. Notice my left knee is straight down from my hip. I'm not popping my left hip out. I'm literally tucking the left cheek under. Reach the left arm up alongside the ear. Look down at your right toes. Turn your right foot now straight, 90 degrees, and try to reach the ball onto the foot down. So turn your right foot straight towards your trapeze, Mary Ellen and try to reach the ball mounts all the way down. You have a different stretch here in the hip. Tuck the left buttocks under, tuck the right buttocks under. Inhale back up to center. Let's switch sides. Bring both knees together. Take one block to the outside of the right knee. And let's
tops of our feet. And I'll show you what I mean. So frame the front of your mat with your blocks, so they're handy if you need them. Bring your hands under your shoulders and block them one palm print forward. Tuck your toes, I'm sorry, don't tuck your toes. Keep them flat, this is what I mean. We're gonna go on to the tops of the feet. This way, down back. And then just roll out through the toes. If you can't go on the tops of the feet all the way up, just try to push and lift the knees up a little. And bring the knees down, and then push and lift the knees up, and bring them down. This helps with bunions, arthritis, and look forward to the horizons, yes, as you lift up. Let's just sit back now in between our feet in Mirasana. And we're gonna go into like a little sequence of what I just did with tucking and then tiptoeing. So I'm like this, inhaling. You can sit on your heels if you can't sit between your feet. We're gonna work the ankles and stretch them. If you can sit between your feet there, asana, try to have your knees moving in. Reach forward, exhale, inhale, lift up, down, dog, only as high as you can lift. Exhale, knees down, sit back. Okay, we're gonna try. <laughs> you can't see that very often, but is Sally shaking your head? Nope. Nope. I can't get on top of my feet right now. Can you sit like this? No, yeah, that I can do. Okay, so when you so reach, go up, it's a little crazy. And then lift up, just like that. Just a little bit with your knees. Yes, you can do it. Okay. Just a little bit. I want us to get used to eventually getting all the way up and down dog because it's important for your joint health. Our feet take us into the future. So experiencing a dropped foot for my herniation, trust me, learning how to use this foot again, and it's been almost three years now, it's so important that we strengthen our feet. So as we sit back now, on either our heels in Vajrasana or Virasana, I want you to get used to just leaning back, fingers pointing forward, and just lift one knee up at a time. <laughs> You're gonna hang me out with all of this. <laughs> Try to lift one knee, oh. and then the other. Good girl, Ellen. Nice. It'll help with your golf game. Oh. And then come back to center. And then see if you can push into your hands and lift your chest and the hips up. Or take your blocks behind your feet, hands on blocks or next to your feet, and lift this way. So I see where everybody's so super tight, I can tell on the legs. Right, inhale up, exhale down. Two more times, inhaling up. Exhaling down. One more time. Inhaling up. Open those underarms. Open the shoulders and chest. Exhaling down. Okay, we're going to reach forward. Go back into down dog. Okay, and then I'm going to come onto my knees, tuck my toes under, and come up to a tiptoe spot like this. So come down on your after you're down dog, we come down onto our knees, bring my hands closer, tuck my toes under, and then come into a tiptoe squat where I lift the heels up. She's not so cute when she sits in a tiptoe squat. <laughs> <laughs> and a tiptoe squat. <laughs> no. And if you're able to balance, use your blocks. Next to, remember you asked for some more. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. It was your fault, Sally. <laughs> okay. And then your hands to your heart yes. center for your knee balance. <laughs> and really lift those heels all the way up to your butt. Try to have the heels under the sit bones, not too wide, not too narrow. And then exhale down, walk the hands forward, knees down, and now come into your regular down dog. Thank goodness. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I just got to put my toes in there. <laughs> you can hold your, you can walk, take a moment. 
today starts with the intention. And we're going to go back up into down dog and do one legged down dog and then we're going to bring it forward into a lunge. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to come back up, go into Adho Mukha Svanasana, down dog. Inhaling this time the right leg up. Stack the hip, pin the outer. Notice my left cheek isn't popping out and pinning it in. Extension. Recenter, look forward, bring the knee to the chest, bring it between the hands into your lunge. Okay, let's see where we're all at. So coming on to all fours, beautiful Mary Ellen, she's right on it, we love it. Inhale, exhale, Adho Mukha, down up. Inhale, extend the right leg up, Ekapada, Adho Mukha, stack your hips. Inhale and exhale here. Inhale, square off your hips, look forward, pivot into a plank with your knee tucked in. 
Bring your right foot down, left knee down. Come up into your lunge. You can always keep your lunge low with your hand down black. Or reach up high. Zipper your inner thighs towards each other. Back toes can be tucked under for stability. Or working on the ankle joint, push down through all five toenails and the head of the ankle. Extend up through the chest. Reach the arms alongside the ears. Command or something. Yeah, uh, put your blanket underneath your knee. Just the better. Yes. Okay. We're going to go back into um, our lunge. And now we're going to lift our body up to standing. We're going to go into Warrior Two. So we're going to my lunge. Bring my hands down, you can come down to the blocks if you need support, and support is perfectly okay. Tuck the back toes under, lift the hips up, swivel the heel down to the ground. <clears throat> Feel the arch alignment if you're able to. Take your left arm and we're gonna windmill the arm up and over to standing. Yes, so help, that helps us with the momentum. Okay. Reach down to your anchor leg, which is your back leg. Picture yourself throwing an anchor in the ground and the water, and it sticks into the mud. Turn that heel towards the back of your mat. Arms are shoulders height, no higher. This is our past, our back arm, this is our future, our front arm, and we want to sit right in the middle. Does that make sense? I think it's such a beautiful symbolism. So when I sit in the middle, I'm sitting down with my pelvis versus lunging forward too far into the future. I'm reaching for too much. Does that make sense? So I think it's a really great way to think about your standing poses that you're sitting right in the middle of your past and your present. Reach for, so this is your present. Reach forward. Gaze over your front fingers and feel that fierceness and strength of the warrior. Engage the arm muscles from the shoulder to the elbow, the elbow to the wrist. Fingers are an extension of the whole spine. We're going to go into a half moon pose, okay? And I'm going to show you with the chair. So turn your feet forward, come to stand. Take your chair, place it at the front of your mat. There's two chairs right there. <laughs> so it's really nice if you have chairs or we have walls and we have all that stuff. So if you wanted to create a sequence with it, it's easy to do. So here I'm in my warrior two position, right? I'm gonna bring my hand to the top of the chair seat. I'm going to walk my hand forward, lift my back leg up, push down into the chair seat, lift the top arm up. So this is the same pose that we did when we're on the ground. Yes, try to really engage left glute, squeeze it. And now point to your lifted leg and reach those toes, toes all the way away. Beautiful, Hori. Looking straight ahead, looking down, or if you're capable, look up. Try to come down as gracefully as you can into warrior two. Bend the front knee, slide the top.
you're in the room in front of me. I'm going to hug into my buttocks. My toes are turned in, and I'm going to try to have as wide of a stance as I can. Traditionally, you want to have your wrists above your ankle. That's how wide you want to be. And you being so tall, okay. it's a really wide stance. Yeah. Okay. Right. You need to really live through the inner thighs. Okay. But be as narrow as you need to be today if that's how you are for today. So variation one is I'm going to come into this forward back, reach my palms on my chair, reach all the way through, let my head dangle, or the widow's peak on the front edge of the chair. Variation two, my hands are going to come down to the ground. My head's going to come towards in between my legs, and my palms reach back, flat down. This is a great pose for counterbalancing the heaviness of carrying yourself on your own two feet all day. It's great for relieving any type of low back issues. It's also really good for um, dripping where you're leaking and you need to engage through the root, which is known as Mulavanda. So if everybody wants to lift up through the bottom of here, picture yourself having your pee in your pants and hold it in. Engage it, get it, hold it. Really lift it up. Inner thighs back, outer hips forward. Let the head drop down. If you can't get your head to the ground, then my suggestion for me and Mary Ellen is to bring the palms under the shoulders, bend the elbows back. So you have some support with your palms. Yes. You come out of the pose. Either your hands are going to press on the chair or they're going to press on the earth. Bring your hands to your hips and lift up to standing and arch at the very top. We're going to switch to the other side now for our lunge sequence. So turn your left leg, left toes, 90 degrees. Kick your right heel back. So you're automatically in alignment. You should be having your heel to arch alignment. Bring your arm down to the ground, your right arm, and bring your knee to the floor. We're going to do the opposite here. We're going to step our left knee back and go into down dog. And then bring your left knee back and step into down dog. Yes, beautiful, Mary Ellen. That was a nice sweep. If you have problems with your hands, you can bring your hands on blocks. You can go on your fists. You can go on your forearms. You can give your hands a break. You need to be on your forearms. Inhale now, let's bring our left leg up towards the sky. Ekapada, one legged down dog. Stack your left hip over your right hip. Beautiful. Push down through those hands, especially your left hand. Inhale, square your hips up. Look forward, bring your left foot forward into a low lunge. Reach the arms up. Another good trick I can show you, um, Sally, is say you don't have a blanket, you'll fold the side of your mat in and bring your knee onto that. Okay. So your right leg. Oh, I, well, I just want you to see the day. Okay. Fold it in. Oh. Isn't that nice? So if you don't have a blanket and you're like, God, I'm so mad at myself. I see yourself getting frustrated. Don't. Okay. All you have to do is just fold in the mat, use what you have, and bring it down. And you can even go further over to the left and fold it in again. Okay. You know what I mean? You don't need a lot of space to do a lunge. Okay. Okay. So that's another option if you don't have a blanket. And then reach up, or if that's too much pressure on your knees, keep your hands down on your block. Let's pause here. <clears throat> Beautiful Mary Ellen, the transition. Now we're going to lift our hips up. Windmill our arms open into warrior two.
Remember to sit down between. This is your present moment. Sit down between the right and the left. The back arm your past, front arm your future. Look over towards your future. Inhale and exhale. Now we're going to go into half moon. I'm going to show you half moon on the floor, and then we're going to bring our chairs over. So to do half moon from here, I bend the knee. I can take my block in my hand. I can go in a diagonal for my pinky toe and lift my leg up and up. Or if I need more height, I have my chair. And I'll do the same thing. Inhale, reach, walk the hand forward, lift, and extend. Really pin the standing leg, hip in, for support. Okay? Let's see where you're all at. So, warrior two. Yes, you're doing left leg forward. So left leg forward, right leg back. Okay. I'll show you both variations again. If you're using your block, it's in your left hand. Squat with the left knee. Walk the block forward on a diagonal from the pinky toe. Slide the back foot up and lift. So it moves towards the pinky yeah. toe of the foot. Yes. Uh, and then you pin that buttocks in or head under. That's your standing pose. How's that feel? Yeah. And then extend the arms. And that's your warrior two. And the extension of the arms is just as important. Fire up the shoulder to the elbow. Yes. So this is all a unit. It's just not the legs working. Okay. Okay, come back up to standing. Let's go into wide leg forward bend one last time. Or you can practice your uh, half moon around, whatever is calling to you. Widen your feet, bring your hands to your hips. Let's all use the floor this time when we go down. And instead of lifting the chest, so I was always taught this. This is something else Judith just taught me. Don't, because if you lift your chest, when you go forward, nothing's activating in your core. I thought that was so cool. She's like, why strain your back? So keep your chin neutral, if even tucked. And then when you bend, 
You fire up your abdomen. You can even place your hands there and feel the difference. Go like this and go down with no action. Go like that and try to come down. Nothing. Oh, yeah. And now just go like this, neutral chin is slightly tucked. And go down and now so your abs are engaged. I think that's the coolest yeah, tip yeah, of all these years that I've seen. That's awesome. <laughs> So it takes the pressure out of your back. Walk your palms towards, uh, in between your feet if you're able. Try to get there. Palms are under shoulders distance apart. Bend the elbows back. And try to get the head to the floor or put blocks under your head. I always feel so far from the floor. Look how far we've got. Yes. Nice. Now, this is the leg pose. Mary Ellen, that's beautiful. Really feel your outer thighs activating through your inner kneecaps. So really fire up those knees as if you're lifting, again, focus on the inner knee, as if you're lifting it up. Eventually, this turns into a headstand. Where you fall with your legs wide. Now, can you soften here for your breath? Place your hands under your shoulder on the next inhalation. Push your chest up. And we're going to come into a squat by walking our feet in, toes out, and then squat down. If you cannot squat, that's when you take the block and you sit on a block. If you can squat, really push down through the pinky side of your feet. Pin your elbows into your knees. Beautiful, everyone. And lift the chest up. I should say lift the ribs up. Because again, keep a neutral chin to fire up the abdomen. That. Like they better read. Well, yeah, but I'm not doing it. You know, you are doing it. That's still the focus. Okay. Now you can focus on really feeling your feet go down. You have to worry about the balance of it. Okay. So every step counts when you're practicing the shape. Go back to the sound of your breath. See if you could breathe six, inhaling six times. Retain the breath at the top. The count to two. And exhale to six. One more time, inhale to the count to six. Retain the breath at the top to the count to two. And exhale to six. And then you're going to find your way down to the ground, whether you reach one hand behind you and then the other and you sit, or if you clap and clap. <laughs> you guys all get a little bit of heat going in you? <laughs> We're releasing some muck. So take the block between your knees. We're going to go into Paschimottasana. Again, I'm working on this future and past symbolism in my practice. Excuse me, so I'm trying to incorporate it with all of you. We're going to bind our shins. So take your strap. Place it below the knees. Mid shin is good. Nice meaty part of the calf. Pull it tight. Okay. <laughs> we asked yourself for a seat. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
And it's really important, your knees and your toes face up. So you want to take your hand and grab the flush of your butt, your bum, and really push it away so you feel the sit bones. Push it out to the side, opening up the cheeks. Really feel yourself grounded, right? Now you want to point the toes up and flex them. Variation two is this pinky toe, both feet, is moving towards the outer kneecap. That fires up this anterior tip, this whole dorsiflexion movement. It helps to strengthen the heel joint and it helps with balancing. So if you were to fall, you could catch yourself. We're going to inhale, reach the arms overhead, bind the hands at the top. Let's get all the way into the webbing of the fingers and turn the palms up. Did you let go of your seat? Are you still pushing down to the seat, but lifting up through the ribs and the pit of the belly? Okay. Inhale and exhale. Releasing the hands, keeping the chin neutral so we can fire up the ab. We're going to reach the collarbones over the toes. If you're able to grab the outside of the feet and roll the pinky side of the foot towards the knees, do so, or just grab wherever you land. If it's your ankle, your shins, whatever. Or you can do your peace fingers. Yoga mudra over the big toes and reach the chest forward. Gaze is steady. Hug into your block with your inner thighs. And now allow the length of your torso to stretch forward and then drop your head, rounding your head, chin in towards the chest. Why it's called the intense forward. Fold, seated forward fold. Breathe. Maybe pulling on the feet. Good. Inhale, look forward. We come out the opposite way we came in. Lift the chest up. Release the hands. Walk the torso back to center. Unclick. Release the block out to the side. We're going to go into uh, Ujjakasana on the front edge of a blanket. Your blanket is going to be folded in half like this. Variation one is it's in this position, the closed edge is what your hips are going to go on. Variation two is you're going to go a little higher on another fold like this. Down to my belly. My hips are on the front edge. I'm going to drop my forehead, bring my hands so that my thumbs are in alignment with my lower rib cage. And feet down. Push all 10 toes down so the shin lifts up and the knees lift up. Inhale, slither up and share. Cobra, Mujibasana. Push down through your pelvis. Specifically, your pubic bone. This is variation one. Variation two is literally to lift the elbows up behind you. Exhale down. We'll do that two more times at your own pace. Walk your thumbs so they're in alignment with your lower ribs. Even further, Mary Ellen. Walk them all the way down. Bring your, yeah, bring your hips on the front edge of the bowl. Uh, even walk your hips more. So have this part of your body, your hip bones on the blanket. Yes, perfect. Thumbs in alignment with your lower ribs. Palms flat. Slither up. Push down through all 10 toenails so they fire up the lower legs. Push your pelvic, pelvic bone down, pubic bone. Variation one, variation two, release those hands, pull the elbows back into space. Yeah, really hugging them in, it's harder. Try to keep your feet down, Mary Ellen, push them into the earth. Inhale and exhale. Good. All right. Let's go into um, our boat pose. You can stick with Bhujanasana if you want, or we're in boat pose. You're going to uh, reach for both feet. If you can't, 
Okay, I do both feet, we'll do one at a time. Hold the ankles with all five fingers. <clears throat> First variation is to lift the chest up, push the knees down. Lift the chest up, push the knees down. Second variation that's more comfortable for you is to lift both the knees and the chest up. If you want to rock the boat, tilting from one side to the other, teaches you about recovering from a fall. It could be both a heart fall where you um, have done, gone through some grief, or it could be emotional, mental, if you're tipping, try to keep your knees together even. When you come down. Inhale and exhale. Find the boat that works for you. Whether it's tipped over and you have to recover <clears throat> from that fall. Really try to grasp your ankles a little bit more, Mary Ellen, with all five fingers, yes. And now isometrically push into your hands with your feet as it brings your whole chest up, good. And then exhale, release down. And let's rest the right cheek, stack your hands underneath your face and rest your right cheek on your hand. If you feel any type of tweaking in your spine, then just shimmy and wiggle your hips a little. Otherwise, just rest in stillness. <coughs> Excuse me. And then switch cheeks. Rest on your left cheek. And then come back to center, push yourself up and come onto your seat. We're gonna go into our inversion. We're gonna go into just a supported bridge pose. We're gonna use the bind of the strap for some support as a variation too. So if you're not comfortable with it, you won't use the strap. The strap is gonna go above the knees so it's a somewhat of a tight bind, and then my feet walk wide, and the blocks are going to go under my hips. So the position is going to look something like this, when I'm on top of the blocks. If the strap is too much for you, don't use it, okay? You're either going to step two blocks and put it under your sacrum, or you're going to use one block. So I'm going to come down to my back. I'm going to pause. I'm going to walk my feet back and turn my heels out. As I inhale, I'm going to lift from the outer hips and lift from that sacrum, the top of the sacrum, lift all the way up from there. Go on your tiptoes, slide two blocks under. If you want to make this more muscle engaging, don't use blocks. You roll your tops to your shoulders under. And you're somewhat gently bursting into the strap. Just really gently. Just helps to reset the um, pelvis. This is so good for digestion. If you have any digestive issues, reach the chest towards the chin. Push down through the tops of the shoulders. If you want more muscle work, you won't use the glass, you will just lift up. You can bind your hands behind your back. Reach the tailbone towards the knees. Lengthen through the back of the neck. 
soften the tongue, take them out, go on your tiptoes, move your blocks out from under your back, release the tailbone is the last thing that comes down, unwrap with the chest, nice and slow, tailbone, hug your knees into your chest, if you have the black uh, strap, unbind your knees, and just hug the knees in. Exhale, bring your nose to your knees. And it's a fetal position. Variation two is to hold the outside of the feet. We're going to prepare for Shavasana. So just massage under your rib cage first. Take your fingers and massage under your ribs. Massage to the belly button. Massage into the pelvis. Taking your fingers and massaging. <clears throat> you can do just a traditional shavasana here since you're already on the ground. If you need support, put them under your knees or your head. Otherwise, just see where you're at with just resting. <coughs> I'm a big proponent of props, but sometimes you might be amazed if you just let yourself go. What can happen? Let's place our hands in Samana Mudra for a minute, where we take our thumb and we take all four fingers and touch it to our thumb tip. This is to have a Samana moment. Um, digestion, uh, information and knowledge, a samadhi moment to release any gripping or holding on to what we just did so that we can fully embrace the pose of Shavasana, Torch Pose. Begin to release the toes. Inhaling and exhaling into the bottom of the feet. Release the skin from the ankles. Inhaling and exhaling into the inner and the outer knees. Let it go. Inhale and exhale into the skin of the thighs. Feel the release of the skin from the muscles and the muscles from the bone. Give yourself permission to release your hips that much more deeply towards the earth here. I'm going to come around with some stress away essential oil. If you don't want it, you can just wait your breath. And as you release deeply into your pelvis, Softening into the right buttocks and then the left. Give yourself that permission to experience groundedness and stability through chaos and overwhelm.
Inhaling, exhaling into the lower back. Releasing into the navel. Exhaling into your heart center. Give yourself permission to breathe through any distractions. Because life is noisy. And as you exhale, into your shoulders. Release the world that you're carrying on your shoulders away. Give yourself permission to soften into your spaces, to heal, to expand, to live. Inhale and exhale from your shoulders to your elbow joints. And as you exhale deeply into the palm of your hand, release your fingers and allow anything left over to puddle up into the palm of the hand. And on the next exhalation, releasing it out through the fingertips and out into the universe. Exhaling as if the whole body is breathing. And inhaling as if the whole body Inhaling into your throat, allowing a gentle smile to embrace the back of the mouth. Softening through the tongue, from the tip to the root, from the root to the tip. Exhaling into the eyes, from the inner edges to the outer edges. And all the space in between, letting go. As you inhale and exhale up and out through the crown of the head. For the next few moments in stillness. Just